what up this is your cosmic homegirl and i'm just doing a quick little video showing you some little astrological tidbits dropping a little knowledge you know what i'm saying mercury is in virgo at the time that i'm recording this and mercury is the sign of logic and your thinking and virgo is very smarty pants very detailed energy so i just thought i would um give these little tidbits to you guys to show you how to figure out the houses in an astrology chart and how they correspond to the signs in a in an astrology chart now i have on the screen a, a wheel right it's got the signs in order and they are numbered 1 through 12 and there are planets here too so this is a really awesome chart because it shows the energies of the signs and also of the houses okay now a lot of people say that they don't really understand the houses in astrology and there's a lot of times when myself or other astrologers that i know we will say that somebody gives off a vibe of a particular sign but then people will be like well nah -uh, they're a blah 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 sun sign and then when we pull up their natal chart especially if we have their birth time which means we can see all the houses in their chart and what planets land in there we can see things like why this person gives off the vibe that is very similar to a certain sign okay so here on the screen we have um the first house and aries and mars that's because aries is the first sign on the zodiac wheel everybody should know that if you happen to see a regular like real deal zodiac wheel out there that starts with aries that is because there are a lot of zodiac wheel pictures that i see that start with other signs and they even go backwards in order and that just i don't know i don't know why they do that but the zodiac starts with aries it's the first sign okay and when we pull up someone's astrological chart and it has the houses, you know, the, the first house energy is very similar to Aries. Meaning if somebody has a planet in their first house, they're going to come off in a bit of an Aries type of way. They may be very headstrong. They may be somebody who gets very heated very quickly, but then as fast as they get mad is as fast as they can get over something. They may be someone who comes off as kind of combative in nature too, because Aries is ruled by Mars. That's why Mars is in the same little slice of pizza as the Aries symbol and the number one. Uh, so maybe someone may not be an Aries, but if we open up their birth chart, they may have Mars in their first house. Even if it's in a sign like Capricorn, who is very emotionally stable, Mars in the first house can act like Aries a little bit, you know, like kind of quick to anger and people may see them as always wanting to fight, you know, to square up or something. An example of this is Nicki Minaj. She has Mars um, conjunct her ascendant, which is a little more complicated to explain, but it's, it acts kind of like that. You know, and she can she can come off a little bit masculine in nature because Mars is a male masculine uh, energy planet and combative. And that's what helps her in her rapping. Um, so even though she's not an Aries, if I didn't know her and I were to be around her and kind of pick up on her energy, I might say something like she gives off kind of an Aries vibe. But then she's not an Aries. People say, oh my gosh, she is a Sand. She's not an Aries. Then what would we do? We'd get her birth time, open up her birth chart. Bam. Well, where's Mars at? What's in her first house? You know what I'm saying? And then we go around the zodiac wheel. Same thing. Taurus. The ruling planet of Taurus is Venus. That's why there's the symbol for Venus there. And the second house, you know, if somebody has planets in their second house, it can act very much like Taurus. Okay, uh, Gemini, third house, Mercury, they all represent the same, well, very similar things too. Not, they're not exactly the same. It's like a very similar type of vibe that they give off and characteristics that they can produce. Like, for example, there are a lot of rappers that are Geminis, right? Because Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury. You see the symbol for Mercury there, okay? Mercury rules communication and speech and logic and thinking 
and most of all communication so what happens when people rap they communicate they use their words their wordsmiths they know how to play with words so and they, they have unique ways of saying their words and they are quick-witted they can just come up with things on the spot that's why there's a lot of people that freestyle okay because their mercury energy is very strong but not all rappers are going to be exactly a gemini like a gemini sun sign they could be a gemini rising or they could have planets in their third house you see the number three above gemini okay that's the third house or they could have mercury in their first house of the the first impression that you give off to people and so on it goes around the wheel you guys um cancer is ruled by the moon leo is ruled by the sun virgo is also ruled by mercury so that's why there's a lot of like virgo rappers and stuff too um libra is ruled by venus um, you know, if people have planets in their seventh house. And if, if I were to say, oh, this person gives off a Libra vibe, it's because they could have planets in their seventh house. Okay. Um, the eighth house and Scorpio, they go hand in hand as well as, um, the ruling planets, which are Mars and Pluto, Sagittarius, ninth house, Jupiter, you know, they, they act very similar as well. Um, that could produce somebody who's very no worries and happy-go-lucky and somebody that has dimples, okay? Tenth house, Capricorn, and Saturn act very similar, too. That could be somebody that has, like, some really cut cheekbones, you know, somebody who kind of commands authority when they are in the presence of other people or they can be someone who are who's really focused on their career and so on. 11th house aquarius and uranus now aquarius is dually ruled um, as far as the planets it has saturn and uranus saturn is the old school ruler of aquarius uranus is the new age the new newer um ruling planet of aquarius so if somebody if i'm like oh they give off aquarius vibes like they act so aquarius but someone says well they're not an aquarius sun well maybe they have the plan the ruling planet of aquarius somewhere very strong, you know, or they can have planets in their 11th house, which makes them act very Aquarius. And then Pisces is the 12th sign, okay? Um, and it's ruled by Jupiter, that's the old school ruler, and also Neptune, the, the new school ruler. So there's a lot of people who, they act very Piscean. And if I were to meet them and I were to see they have like um, eyes that kind of look very dreamy in some sort of way. I'd be like, wow, they must be a Pisces. They give off a Pisces vibe. But yet, you know, maybe they are um, a Sagittarius. Then people be like, oh my God, you got it wrong. No, there are a lot of people who are born with the sun conjunct Neptune, the ruling planet of Pisces. Um, and that's how they can give off a vibe that's very similar to Pisces. Um, or someone has planets in their 12th house, meaning they could be very dreamy. They could be very low key. They like their alone time. They can get drained very easily of their energy with being around others. Maybe they like to escape reality a lot. Like maybe they drink or they smoke a lot. I find that a lot of people who love to just like, um, you know, they just love to smoke and, and chill and just kind of that's their life, most of their life. They have a lot of planets in their 12th house or maybe at least the sun there or something. So um, if there's any questions regarding this, of course, drop them below. You can hit me up. You can email me. My contact info is in the description box too. But I wanted to show you guys an example of what I am talking about here. So here is a sample chart. I just typed up a random birthday, time, place, and everything. So this person um that i made up <laughs> they have uh planets in the 12th house of their natal chart they have the sun venus and mercury all clustered together in their 12th house so then um if i were to meet this person and they were to say i'm a leo because of their sun sign i would be like you know what you seem a little bit more low-key than the average leo so i would kind of feel out their energy and say you know what you have some like water sign energy. Um, you have some energy that makes you more private than the average Leo. And then if they were to give me their birth time and everything, I'd pull up their birth chart and then lo and behold, they would have planets in their 12th house, which acts like the 12th sign on the Zodiac, which is Pisces. 
So if you see here, once again, the number 12, the 12th house, Pisces. Okay, very, very similar energy. So this person would probably be very creative because Leo's a creative sign. Um, the 12th house energy is very creative as well. Now, if you look at their moon, um, their moon is in Sag, it's conjunct Jupiter. They would probably be a very happy-go-lucky person. So I would probably be like, you know what, you have some uh, Sagittarius type of energy, but I still feel like because of your moon placement, you could be very sensitive. Um, maybe this person would be very close to their family and say, family is everything. Oh, my family, they mean everything to me. And I would feel out their energy and be like, you know what? They have like a cancer type of a vibe to them. And lo and behold, if we were to open up their birth chart, okay, their moon would be at the very bottom of their chart, like in their fourth house. You can see the comparison once again, the number four, cancer, moon, okay, so fourth house acts kind of like cancer. So the location of their moon is, um, well, I would count it as fourth house, okay? So that's why they would be like, oh, you know, I'm very close to my family. Oh, yeah, you know, they would say, yeah, I'm a Sagittarius moon, but I'm like, well, why are you such a homebody? Why do you like to just kind of chill out in your own little world, you know? So their fire energy is kind of like hidden away. Um, and their Mars is in the second house. So their physical drive and act, the way they take action. Yeah, it's in Libra, but it acts very much similar to Taurus too. Like they like to take their time. They're very contemplative before they take action, just like a Taurus. Maybe they can be a procrastinator even, you know, kind of go back and forth. And then, I don't know, maybe like two years later, they'll do something they, <laughs> they said they would always do. They're not going to be ones that are like, bam, with the action because their Mars is in the second house. And once again, if you want to do a comparison, see second house, Taurus, you know, they are very similar in the way that they come off in the energy that they give off. Now, here's another sample um, chart. And this person is a Virgo sun, but they have the sun and Venus in their fifth house. Okay, so... I had a little, <laughs> I posted a little something on my Instagram stories about um, Leos and fifth house people touching their hair a lot because, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube and, um, you know, people on YouTube, they really put themselves out there for the public to see everything about them, their little quirks, their little habits and, and stuff like that. And I noticed that a lot of YouTubers who have Leo energy or fifth house energy, they, they do touch their hair a lot. They mess with their hair. So it'll be like, okay, well, they're not a Leo sun. They don't have any planets in Leo. Where is this coming from? Well, then you, you know, if you knew their birth time, maybe you might pull it up and see that although they're a Virgo, like in this chart, their Virgo stuff is in their fifth house. Fifth house energy and Leo energy, they work hand in hand with the type of vibe that they give off. You see, once again, look at the number five. The fifth sign on the zodiac wheel is Leo. So if someone has fifth house planets, they can come off very Leo-like, okay? And one last little example is um, we would look at this person and say, you know what? They give off kind of a Gemini vibe. Like this person talks really fast. And they look around a lot. Their eyes are always Googling and like darting around all over the place. And they have a very short attention span. Why is that? And then they would say, oh, well, I'm not a Gemini. I'm a Virgo. Well, look at their first house. The first house is like what people read from you when they first meet you. It's like what you give off the strongest, you know. And they have Mercury in their first house. Okay, so Mercury is there and Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini. So a lot of people who have Mercury in the first house, you know, whatever planet is there, it's like um, you can act like the sign that that planet rules. So once again, looking at our little guide here, look at Gemini. And what's the little planetary symbol um, above Gemini? It is Mercury. So that's the ruling planet of it. So if you have that planet in your first house of the first impression that you give off, then you may act like the sign that that rules. 
I know this could be a little confusing for people who only know their sun sign. They don't know anything else. They don't know birth charts. They don't know anything. But if you're at least like intermediate, you know, maybe like middle level, maybe like a little bit above sun signs, maybe hopefully you understand what I'm talking about here. And like I said, if you don't, I am open to questions. I also give natal chart readings to read your chart and I explain all this stuff and break it down for you personally and what it means for you and how your energy comes off in your own chart. So um, of course, if you want a reading, my website is in the description area. It is indigomoonastrology.com and I hope this was helpful to at least some people. And um, yeah, you guys can like pause the video, you can uh, f Google and find this image. <laughs> I found it on Google. Um, if you ever want any type of a guide to, you know, what the energy of the houses are like, pretty much learn all the signs, you guys. Learn every single zodiac sign, not just your own, not just your sun sign. Learn the characteristics of every single sign and then understand that they go in a specific order of the zodiac. And that will help you to then understand the houses and what they mean. Also learn the ruling planets of every sign and what type of energy that they give off, what type of energy and characteristics they give to the sign. You know, so it's the, the sign, the planet, the house, they can all act very, very similar. So just get to know each one and look around you you know test it out pull up charts of people that you know or maybe um celebrities or public figures whose personalities you really really know very well and test it out okay um test out your findings and then gradually over time maybe you can start to understand a little bit more um especially if it's like you you like your mom seems very cancer like but sh her sun sign is not cancer you know, maybe her son is in the fourth house. You know what I'm saying? So you'll start to be able to pick up on stuff like that eventually, hopefully. So um, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.